I'm Douglas Wicks. I'm a program director at RPE. I'm here today to share some uh, about an interest area we have looking at energy efficient routes to commutation. So what are we looking for? We're really looking for disruptive developments in this process of how do we process our mineral ores. The mining industry is a key component of our economy. Uh, and really, as we go forward, we'll be called on to produce record volumes uh, in support of the energy transition. Um, and, and as we look at the ores that will be processed for energy, these metallurgical ores, uh, crushing and grinding uh, reduce the size and increase the surface area of, of the ore to really allow us to be able to extract or do a chemical reaction of the elements inside uh, of these. Um, and really what's driving, what's the driving force? Why are we interested in this now? Um, you know, this is a, a uh, quote from the World Bank recently where they published a new report on uh, the mineral requirements to drive uh, the, the uh, changing of our energy over to renewables, uh, where they talk about the fact we need to increase the production of key materials by 500% over the next 30 years uh, to meet these demands. And that we'll have to mine 3 billion tons of minerals and metals to deploy wind, solar, and geothermal uh, and energy storage, you know, to attain our climate goal futures. Very interesting report to read. So concurrently, I mean, at the same time, uh, in the global situation, we're facing a rapid decrease in our ore grades. This is happening to all of our industrial minerals. Uh, the two graphs on, on the right um, show what's happened uh, with two specific metals. On top, um, the CNRS out of France mapped the uh, ore grades of nickel deposits uh, in different parts of the world. We see New Caledonia, uh, Canada, and Australia represented, where the amount of nickel that's present within the ore has dropped from 10 or so percent, way down now to being below 2% and approaching 1%. Similarly, uh, the bottom graph shows the decrease in uh, copper ore grades uh, in Chile um, over a period of 17 years, where initially at the start of the measurements, they were almost one and a half percent copper uh, in the ore that they were mining. And it has continuously dropped now to it's approaching half a percent copper. So what this, the impact of this is, is we see large increases in tons mined per ton of product. So as we do these changes, we have to dig up a lot more rock. Uh, and this leads to major increases in the processing energy and cost. And also, by the way, has an increased environmental disruption, disruption effect. So there's huge changes. We need more materials. And at the same time, the sources of those materials uh, are uh, becoming less pure. So when we look at energy, We'll look at energy in U.S. mining. Um, in 2007, the Department of Energy EERE group uh, did a report on the U.S. mining industry. The results are shown at the right, at a high level, showing the percentage of energy that's used in each uh, step of the mining process. And, and those in green are really the ones uh, dedicated to size reduction. So this is a crushing. Uh, and grinding that make up almost 50% of the energy. It should be noted that this is dominated by coal and aggregate mining in the U.S. at that time. Um, hard rock processing for metal uses um, require much more energy per ton than coal to mine, crush, and grind. So that metals will require a larger input of energy for the separation and refining steps. Quite the challenge. Uh, it should be kept in mind that up to 10% of all the energy uh, in the world that, that we use goes towards mineral and fossil 
carbon extraction. So it's a huge business area out there that needs to be addressed. So historically, we look back and mining is one of the oldest uh, processes that uh, mankind has pursued. Typically, mining depended on brute force, either by man or beast, where by hand we would extract the, the rock out of the ground and process it. Uh, we may use uh, animals, uh, such as shown on the bottom, to grind the rock through an attrition process. And this, pro this method of mining persisted for thousands of years. Uh, in the 19th century, during the Industrial Revolution, we witnessed a steady stream of advances in size reduction. So this ability to get the rock down to a processable size. Uh, we use joint, jaw and conical crushers that would crush the rock down. Tumbler and tube mills came out where we would rotate the rocks and they would impede, impinge upon each other, uh, reducing the size and wearing themselves down. Uh, we then brought in ball and rod mills, which added in external grinding media into the system. And then we did stirred media mills all developed in the 19th century during the Industrial Revolution as really the metals became um, the basis of the new economy. So what is the mechanism of size reduction that we, we practiced in the past as well as during the 19th century? Um, there are two basic methods employed. One is compression, where we take two uh, hard materials and mash them against each other. And then uh, a second major method is attrition, where we add in an axial force in addition to the compression that we have. So these are quite common methods. And really what we're doing is trying to put a big stress into the, uh, the particle and such that it will cleavage along um, fault lines or grain boundaries to relieve that stress. Um, and result in a smaller particle. So two basic methods, compression and attrition, are, are widely practiced in many different forms. When we look at the 20th century and really into the early, uh, early part of this century, um, efficiency and optimization became the key words that everybody was chasing. Um, we brought steady advances uh, into play on a massive scale. Uh, the size of the mining industry is, for most people, almost incomprehensible. Uh, with a focus on optimization, integration of systems, such that material would flow from one part to the other without stopping. Automation um, was brought in to reduce the, uh, the labor costs, and they changed the materials of construction. We came up with tougher steels, we came up with tougher grinding media, which allowed us to process uh, more and more difficult rock. But they used the same basic compression and attrition mechanisms. So really going back to, again, the, the historical roots of mining, uh, of the fact we're gonna either push two rocks together as hard as we can until one breaks, uh, or we're going to, um, drag one hard material across a softer material to cause it to flake off. So, what are the challenges here? Um, if we look at the metal extraction processes, if we want to get a metal out of an ore, um, the reactions to do that, either through chemistry or, or through uh, a, a straight extraction method, are really limited by surface area. So we want to have the smallest particles as possible for a lot of these operations with the highest surface area. Um, and, and that presents a challenge. As the simple graph on the right shows, there's two types of processing that takes place uh, typically within these integrated systems. One is crushing, where we take a large uh, piece of ore that's been extracted from the earth and crush it down into the millimeter scale. And, and then we go into milling, which requires us to go to a much smaller size. Uh, and here we, we show going down to the sub-millimeter, but actually in industrial processes, we, we do grind a lot of materials down to the sub-micron size. 
Um, what's important about this is the grinding energy to power this, not to, the grinding energy for this is a power function of surface area. And so as we go through smaller and smaller sizes, we put in huge amounts of energy to get down there. And when we start grinding below one millimeter or a tenth of a millimeter, excuse me, the efficiency drops dramatically with greater than 90% of the energy being, much greater by the way, of 90% of the energy uh, um, put into the system is lost to heat of friction. So what challenges do we need to address? Um, we at RPE, we're trying to reimagine what's needed to get the extraction of these products. So as we look at the mining process from blasting and removal to crushing to size reduction to eventual products, um, this interest area I'm talking about is really focused on the first three years. How do we get down to the size of the process? So how do we drive down the energy needs? that will allow us to increase yields from these low-grade ores. Uh, are there new hybrid approaches that we could pursue to do this? Um, and, and really, do we need to reduce the size to increase surface area? Are there other ways to increase the effective surface area without crushing the rock down? Um, we need to worry about process flows. These have to be continuous. They have to be low maintenance. We need to reduce consumables. Uh, within these. Uh, within our modern media mills, one of the major costs from both a, a monetary standpoint as well as a carbon footprint is the grinding media that we use. This has to be continually replaced and supplemented. Uh, at the same time, we need to worry about the environmental impacts of mining. Can we, with, as we reimagine um, the process, can we reduce water consumption? Can we help with tailings management or the waste of the material that comes out of the mining process? So what can we do? You know, and I have to look at this and say, how do we build on the innovations uh, of, our an of our ancestors? Uh, I really like the graphic at left. Um, this is a, a print, wood print that you can, uh, wood block print that you can look up. It shows mining processes during the Middle Ages, and one of the interesting things they've done is they figured out it's easier to mine rock after you've done a heating cycle on it. So they would literally light fires underneath the ground to heat the rock up, throw water onto it to cause it to weaken and be easier to dig out. So can we build on that? So looking at this, can we reduce size while reducing the brute force, which is what our ancestors tried to do? Are there thermal methods? Can we use thermal shock? Are there electrical methods? Can we use electricity um, to do this? Are there biological methods? Can we use sound or ultrasound to this? Um, or, or as uh, I would like to think, can we come up with a Star Wars type blaster that you aim at the rock and it just, falls apart immediately. So what are we interested, interested in? Really, I'd have to say just about any innovative approach to reduce particle size or increase surface area while decreasing energy demands. It can be a hybrid with existing methods. So it could be something that's added into the existing uh, grinding um, processes. It could be pretreatment of ores that significantly reduce the mechanical energy of grain boundaries. So basically pretreating the ores by novel methods that allows us um, to more energy in a more energy efficient fashion process the rock. Uh, we're interested in processing hard rocks. If we look at the um, metals and elements required for our energy transition, um, they tend to be in very hard rocks. They tend not to be in softer materials like coal, like coal is, or some of the other materials. And the other thing we want within our concepts, it must be scalable. Uh, to the right is shown a, a aerial photograph of the Bingham Canyon copper mine in Utah. Uh, and to give you an idea of the scale that we, we think about working at, this mine produced 19 million tons of copper. It's the largest hole right now in North America. Uh, at the peak uh, of operations, 
they were extracting 450,000 tons of ore a day to be processed. So scalable means very large in this case. What are we not interested in? Um, we're really not interested in proposed technology that's already in practice or that, you know, would onshore tech uh, that's practiced outside of the United States. We're, we're not interested in ideas that cannot be scaled to continuously process large volumes. Um, we're not looking for approaches that do not improve the economics of mining. What we want to do is increase, decrease energy and increase the profitability of our mining process. And we're really not looking for any incremental enhancements to existing grinding circuits, uh, whether it's process optimization, improved media, uh, changes in geometry. These are all being done by um, our existing mining uh, suppliers. So it's, we're looking for a drastic or, or a radical change in the way we approach it. So. Uh, I'd also ask that you look at related uh, activities at RPE. Um, there are several webinars on the open webpage um, that are in related topics. Uh, one on accelerated geomineralization. Uh, we have another one um, on decarbonization of iron and steel making. And then a third topic that I presented, which is looking at CO2 mineralization uh, and really as a tool in the extraction of critical and commodity minerals. And with that, I'll leave you to uh, think about uh, the quote of Pliny the Elder uh, in 78 AD talking about the mining world and how we have to be careful with what we, we are trying to do. Uh -huh.